with this beat. I'm not dreaming.
Good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? Welcome to the Fountain of Life. Why don't we all stand up? We are here to give God some praise. So we're going to lift our voice and we're going to clap our hands and, and declare his goodness. But before we do that, you probably have noticed some new faces behind me. Uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, a team from the University Valley Forge, uh, which is my alma mater, and uh, Pastor Matt's alma mater, and Pastor Johnny's, and basically two-thirds of the staff here. So, uh, and you guys recognize Kurt Hartwell back here. He's uh, rejoining us for today. Why don't we welcome them? Let's. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. We are so glad to have you uh, leading us in worship. Guys, lift, let's lift our voice. Let's clap our hands. Let's give God the praise he deserves. They are our guests. Let's have some fun. Amen. Kurt, why don't you take it? Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for a new morning, Lord God, another opportunity to worship you and to give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. We pray that you'd come and inhabit the praises of the
victory in our own way like right now let us just lift it shines for all to see let's just sing this oh it's your name your name your name
Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we are here because of how great you are, O oh Lord. We're here to worship you, to lift your name up high, Lord God. We're here to be able to know more about you so that we can be the living sacrifices that you call us to be so that you can use us to bring your kingdom down here on earth, O oh Lord. Oh Jesus, would you remind us of how good you are to us? Would you remind us of what you've done for us, Lord? And would you empower us to take that message, to take your good news to people who are broken and hurting, Lord God? Holy Spirit, would you just open up our eyes and open up our ears to know what you are calling us to do, Lord? Lord, we are so grateful for who you are. We know that you have been great to us, Lord. And Lord, we worship you because of that. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray all these things in your powerful and holy name. And everyone said, amen and amen. You may be seated right where you're at. Hey, can we give a huge round of applause to the University of Valley Forge UVF for being here with us, leading us in worship. We're so grateful for all of you joining us and being able to, to, to come in and be part of the Fountain family. We're so glad that each and every single one of you are, are here. Thanks so much for everything. Hey, my name is Pastor Ruben. I'm the Connections Pastor here at the Fountain of Life, and we are so very glad that each and every single one of you are joining us here today. We're especially glad if you are here for the very first time. Can we give all of our first-time guests just a huge round of applause? Thanks so much for being here. At the Fountain of Life, we, we seek after God first and foremost, seek after his kingdom first and foremost, and we hope that you feel that in absolutely everything that we do here. If you are here for the very first time, what we would love for you to do is head on over when you're ready to leave the sanctuary, head on over to our welcome desk. We have some guest services people there who'd be able to help you out just a little bit, and, and we wanna be able to put a gift into your hands. If you do us that favor, we would love for you to head on over that. If you fill out a Connect card, that way we can know uh, how we can serve you a little bit better. If you have kids, we want to let you know about our great children's ministry that we have available. If you're looking to meet other believers, we want to let you know about our life groups. If you've got teenagers, we want to tell you about the source. We want to be able to help you in your faith journey as you continue to walk this out, try to figure out what this Christian faith looks like for you. We want to be able to help you through that. In addition to that, we do have a gift for you. If you'll do us this favor, head on over to the welcome desk that we have in the lobby. Fill out that connect card. We have that gift for you. And then one of our pastors will call you this week, uh, text you this week and contact with you just to be able to, to figure out how we can help you just a little bit more as you continue to grow in your faith. The same thing is available to anybody who's watching online. There is a virtual connect card right in that video description. So feel free to click on that. All that same stuff is available for you. We'd love to be able to mail you that gift so you're not missing out uh, just because you're at home, a little bit more comfortable than the rest of us. So we're, we're glad that you're joining us online as well. Hey, we want to let you know about some great things that are happening here at the Fountain of Life. This Wednesday, we'll be able to continue the worship nights that we have been doing all throughout July. We've been inviting all these different friends to come and join us and lead worship, sharing a little bit of, of devotion about God speaking to, to them. And we'd love to invite you out to that again. This week, we are going to be having our friends from City Life Church out in Philly being able to join us, being here with us. We would we'll love for you to come out as well so that you can worship with us worship with some of our friends. We'd love for you to be able to join that. If you have kids, we have something incredible that's happening with our children's ministry as well. Throughout the entire summer, they're doing a uh, summer of splash. It's uh, been absolutely amazing. What we're going to be doing this week is a foam of palooza. That's exactly what it sounds like, right? Foam everywhere, bubbles everywhere. We'd love for you to be able to join that. If you got kids, and you'd love for, uh, we'd love for you to, to bring them on out. We would uh, invite you to bring a towel onto a bathing suit and everything for them. Them, uh, just because just it's going to be wet. You're, you're going to want that so that your car is not soaking wet. You can't blame us. I'm telling you right now, that's not our fault, right? So we'd love for you to be able to do that and, uh, and, and, and bring your whole family out to enjoy an incredible night. All of that is happening this Wednesday. 
At this time, what we're going to do is receive our tithes and our Kingdom Builders offering. What I'd love to be able to do is just encourage you with a very simple scripture. It's found in Deuteronomy. This is Moses talking to all the people as they're entering into the promised land. They're, they're entering into the promised land, and what Moses is doing is reminding all of these people what God has said reminding them all of what God is calling them to do, reminding them of who he is. And so in Deuteronomy, I believe it's chapter eight, don't quote me on that, 818, way to go, Reuben, proud of you. In Deuteronomy 818, it says this, it says, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Remember the Lord your God, because it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Everything that we have is because God is so gracious to us to give those things to, to, to us. There's another scripture found in the New Testament that says every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so in this, as Moses is encouraging the Israelites as they enter into this new promised land, as he's saying, don't forget all of these incredible things that God is doing. He's saying, remember the fact that we have anything at all is because God has given us the opportunity to produce that. God has given us the opportunity to have that. So when we give our tithes, when we give our kingdom builders offering that, that above our tithes, what we're doing is being able to say, God, I'm worshiping you in this. I'm remembering you in this. And I'm saying you are first and foremost in my life. As I give this money over, if I give this 10% over of my income, what I'm saying is that you, God, are first and foremost. And I choose to remember you because you are the one who has provided for me. If you're here to give and you want to give a physical gift, we have buckets in the back. We'd love for you to be able to do that on your way out of the sanctuary today. If you, anybody uh, here in person or online that would love to, to give, we have a bunch of digital ways that you can do that. You can give by texting to give. You can give on our website. You can also give via our app. All these different ways for us to be able to say, God, I am remembering you first and foremost. Can I pray for us? Lord Jesus, we are grateful that you are our provider, that everything that we have is because you have given it to us. God, in this moment, as we remember you, we're choosing to worship you in this. We're choosing to lift your name on high, being able to say you are first in our lives, that we will seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, knowing all these other things, all these other concerns that we have will come second to your kingdom. Lord, we love you, we trust you. As we give these things to you, God, would you multiply them so more and more people can hear about your incredible good news, about your incredible gospel, oh Jesus. Lord, we love you, we thank you. We pray all these things in your powerful and holy name. Everyone said amen and amen. God bless you as you give, everyone. Good morning, church family. Good morning, church family. And everybody watching online, hey, one more time, let's give a big applause to the University of Valley Forge. Kurt Hartwell, love when you lead worship, brother. And everybody you brought with you, thank you so much. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. So glad all of you are here. Thank you for being here. I know that the Word of God is alive and active in our lives. Can you say amen out loud to that? For everybody watching online, let me add my greeting to Pastor Rubens. So glad you are here. I think you said they're a little more comfortable than we are, of course. On the couch is always a good thing. But so glad that you're here today. 
Let me ask you this right here. Has anyone ever had any anxiety when it comes to being a follower of Jesus uh, with some questions like this? I wonder how valuable I really am to God, especially with all the baggage in my life, some of the skeletons in my closet. I wonder if it's ever given you anxiety, wondering what happens after I become a follower of Jesus and I sin or really fail God. Does God reject me after I have fallen, after I have failed, or after I have sinned? I'll tell you another thing that gives a lot of Christians anxiety, and that is, I wonder if I'm really going to go to heaven or not. Gee, I don't know. I hope the good outweighs the bad. I hope that I, I try hard enough. Hope that I do good enough. I'm hoping that in the end, that God accepts me. That whole thing about doing go to heaven or not, or am I going to make it someday, can cause a fair amount of anxiety, even in Christians. But how many know that the Word of God has the answer to all these questions? There's something about good theology and the study of God and the study of His Word that will settle, settle some questions and settle you down and take away some of the constant anxiety that we live with. In case you, know, you, you don't know what I'm talking about, well, I think you do know what I'm talking about because if we would all be honest, we've all had some of those questions plague us. But I'm thankful to God because he is able to anchor us, settle us, and build us up in our faith. If you agree with me, say amen. How about we tackle just a few of those questions today and I want to welcome you to this brand new message series called Marked. Everybody say Marked. We're going to jump into this right now. In fact, over the next several weeks, the pastors, we've been working on this together. We're actually going to share in the preaching duties uh, this week. Me, Pastor Reuben will be next week, and, and then me, and then another one of the pastors, and then me and another one of the pastors. And you're going to hear from some great communicators that we have on staff here as well as we have prayerfully together been putting this series together. I want to start right here with a great passage of scripture that really settles a lot of questions at the onset. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Look what it says. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal. I want to say amen right there. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. It gets better. Who is a deposit in our hearts, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Can I get a one amen out of somebody today? And that's not an amen to a point in the sermon. That's just an amen to the word of God. I love the way he starts out. He says, and you also were included in Christ. Is anybody glad to be included? Praise the Lord. The same gospel that included some roughneck fishermen 2,000 years ago. The same gospel that included a scheming, thieving tax collector. The same gospel that included a woman caught in the act of adultery. The same gospel that included her and that included the writer of this epistle, Paul. Who before he was converted was a murderer. Somebody ought to be thankful today for the grace of God. The same gospel that included the fisherman, the tax collector, the woman caught in adultery, a murderer who wrote this after he was saved. It includes you and it includes me. The love of God, it includes everyone and excludes no one. Here it is. Here's the gospel. I found it in two verses in the book of Acts. It encapsulizes the gospel of Jesus. Acts 13, 38 and 39. 
Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. Amen to that. Praise God. If the gospel is about anything, it is about a God who meets us where we are, not where we ought to be. And something great happens when we put faith in Jesus, when we trust his sacrifice. Oh, I'll tell you this. A miracle happens. So no Christian anywhere in any time can ever say, well, I've never experienced a miracle. But you have. Because something miraculous happens when you believe this gospel. He says, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. That's the title of today's marked message, marked with a seal. Everybody say that out loud. Marked with a seal. The Bible says when we believe, there was a deposit made in your hearts. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, this seal, what does it mean? Walk with me, because it's about to get good. What does this seal mean? Well, the people in Paul's day, they really understood this mark with a seal. In his time, here's what they would do. When a letter would be sent so that people would know who wrote it, it was authentic or genuine, they would seal a letter by dripping hot wax on the fold and pressing a signet ring, if you would like that, indicating that the letter was genuine. So they understood this seal. For us, a seal is often found on a birth certificate, a deed to your house, or a marriage certificate. I, I brought something here to uh, illustrate it. A, a, a notary will use what is called an embosser. And after all of the parties have signed the document, then the notary will, will use the embosser and put this seal on a document. And that seal is raised. And guess what? No eraser can erase that seal. It is a permanent, somebody say permanent. It is a permanent impression. A permanent mark on a document after everyone has signed and it validates it as genuine and authentic. I'll tell you what, in the same way that an important document is marked with a seal, Paul uses this metaphor. When you believe the gospel, God marks, oh praise God, <laughs> he marks you with a seal it is the imprint of his image on your life. It is the promised Holy Spirit in you. Amen. And guess what? That mark, that seal cannot be erased. What God has established, no man on earth and no devil out of hell can undo. Somebody say, I marked. If you're a believer in Jesus, I mean, you really know. You put your faith in the gospel of Jesus. You know you've been marked. Say, I'm marked. It's an invisible mark. It is the Holy Spirit that's been deposited in our hearts. And guess what? That seal of the Holy Spirit answers a lot of questions. For example, let me go back to the notary. When signing an important document before a notary, and most likely all of you have, all the parties must first sign. After all of the parties have signed, the notary puts a, a stamp on the document and signs it. The final step is when the imprint is made on the document. That's the final step. It signifies that the transaction is finished. This is my first point. The seal proves the transaction is finished. Praise God. The last words of Jesus on the cross were these. It is finished. What is finished? The sacrifice for sin. The seal of God. The Holy Spirit in your life. 
Don't miss this, everybody. It'll settle your questions and your anxieties when your life doesn't measure up, when you don't perform so well, when you're not doing as good as you or other people think you should do. When God puts his spirit in you, it signifies, it proves when he seals you that the transaction is finished. Walk with me in Hebrews, under the old covenant, Hebrews 10, reading just a few verses. Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But our high priest, Jesus, offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Let that settle in. Let that just settle in. His sacrifice was good for all time. And then he sat down at the right hand of God. Then he adds in verse 17, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. Wow, what a mighty God. And verse 18, where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. So let's just break it down a little bit. The Old Testament priest, day after day after day, they were offering sacrifices for sin. Once a year on that day of atonement, Yom Kippur, the high priest would go into the holy of holy place with the blood of a spotless lamb without blemish. And there he would gain atonement or forgiveness of sin for the people for another year. But the bad news is this. The same sacrifice would have to be offered next year and the next year and the next year. Because the blood of bo goats and bulls and lambs could never take away sin. Here's what it did. Let me illustrate it. I don't know if anybody here has ever done this. You ever swept the floor and couldn't find the dustpan? And uh, <laughs> I see somebody laughing in the second row. And, uh, and you maybe lift up the rug and whoosh. I don't think anybody here has ever done that. But let me ask you a question. Is the dust still there? The dust is still there. You just can't see it. So it appears clean. The old, it was just like this in the Old Testament. When the Old Testament priests offered sacrifice, whether it was day by day by day, or on that great day of atonement, Yom Kippur, all it did, all that did, it did not take sin away. It swept our sin under the rug. So God could look on his people. But the sin was still there. But our great high priest Jesus did not come to sweep sin under the rug. He came to take it away. Praise God. He takes away the sin of the world. His sacrifice did not sweep your sin under the rug, did not tuck it away for another day or for another year. No, John the Baptist said it this way, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. His sacrifice redeemed us and settled it once and for all. The transaction now finished. Listen, there will be times that you fail God. There will be times, there's not one person in this room, no one of the pastors, even if we're ordained, nobody watching online, no holy, righteous people, there is not anyone who walks perfect. We all come up short of God's righteous standard. So what happens? What happens when I fall? What happens when I sin? Does God reject me? Did I lose my salvation? Is God excommunicate me out of the church? Do I have to? Get saved all over again. Listen, I don't deserve the 785,364 chances God has given me. Neither do I deserve the next one. I thank God. He's just not the God of a second chance. I used my second chance when I was 15. He's the God of another chance. And his sacrifice provided forgiveness for you and me for all time. Now watch the transaction. I said it is finished. Jesus sacrificed his life 
Don't miss this. And don't ever let it get old. He sacrificed his life on the cross to pay the penalty for sins. His sacrifice was once and for all. Okay, you signed, now what's my part? What's your part? You and I must believe and trust in the sacrifice of Jesus. Amen to that. And I'm not talking about some mental assent or just a head knowledge. I know many people know it up here, but it has to make the 18-inch travel to the heart. And when you believe, I'm not talking about, well, I believe there's a God. No, the devil believes there's a God. I said the devil believes and trembles. It's more than a mental assent. When I believe, when you believe, in other words, when you trusted the sacrifice of Jesus, watch it. He sacrificed for sin. I believed it. He sealed it with the Holy Spirit deposit in our hearts. Oh, somebody ought to say amen out loud. Pray, come on, you, 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 you didn't come to the nine o'clock. You slept in today. You've already had your frosted flakes. Come on, this is some of the most powerful theology you'll ever hear that will settle your heart. Because Christians live with anxiety. Because none of us are perfect and we always wonder, is the last sin I committed going to sink my ship? And I'm here today to tell you, as long as you are following Jesus, trusting Jesus, that seal, Paul said the seal is the Holy Spirit. Here's the transaction one more time. Jesus sacrificed his life for the forgiveness of sins. You believed, you trusted him, you trusted his sacrifice for your salvation, and then he sealed it by putting the Holy Spirit in your heart. I'm gonna clap with you. So the transaction is finished. God doesn't put his Holy Spirit in unregenerated, unbelieving people. Everybody doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Who has the Holy Spirit? Those who have put their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and that supernatural second when you trust Jesus for your salvation. He deposits the Holy Spirit in you. It's God's mark on your life. It's God's seal that proves the transaction is finished. It's not about, listen, it's not about, well, am I good enough? Am I strong enough? Am I holy enough? Am I righteous enough? Do I have to do better? Try harder? Work at it longer? No, the work is finished. The work is finished. And if some of you even made some mistakes Last week, forget last week, yesterday. <laughs> and you may be wondering, well, where do I stand with God? The transaction is finished. You've been marked by the seal of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. That is not some excuse to sin. And you're saying, well, uh, well pastor, am I, am I unconditionally, forever, eternally secure as long as you're following Jesus? Yes. There you go. As long as you're following Jesus, yes. Well, how could one ever be saved, ever be lost? If one ever denies faith in Christ, he or she is in danger of being lost. As long as you're following Jesus, you are secure in Christ. Can I get an amen in the house? And the seal, the seal is God's mark. What is the seal? It's the Holy Spirit in your heart. Not only does it prove the transaction is finished, the seal conveys ownership. 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 I am not my own. I have been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. Let me illustrate it again in Paul's time. Now Ephesus, whom he wrote this book, this epistle, it was a thriving, thriving city with business people and entrepreneurs, uh, and here's what they would do. When the owner of goods would have his merchandise shipped to a destination, he would mark his goods or mark his merchandise with his mark or with his seal so that when all of these goods are going down the river, when he arrives at the destination, the owner, when the owner arrives, how does he know which log is his? 
in case they're shipping timber. How does he know what belongs to him? He knows what he owns because before it left the port, he put his mark on it. He put his seal on it so when he arrives, there's no guessing. Does this belong to me? Does he belong to me? Does she belong to me? Does he belong to me? Does she belong to me? There's no question because you have the seal of God, the Holy Spirit. The same thing, we do the same thing kind of like that in in our day when we ship our luggage. I brought Luann's neon blue suitcase here. Now when we travel, we, we check our luggage. Of course, it's got our name on it, and uh, there are other blue suitcases, but when we get to our destination, you know how she can tell that's hers? Because she marked it before we left. And you know, my wife marks things with dogs. That's a Boston Terrier right there. My wife is a dog lover. God help us all. But when we get there, if there's another blue suitcase, doesn't matter. Well, what color do you think it is? (laughs) Somebody said, don't look blue to you. (laughs) All right, well, I'll pray for you. Um, When we get there, there's no question about, is that Luann's? It has her mark. How many have ever shipped a black suitcase? (laughs) If you ship a black suitcase, you better put a mark on that. Because have you ever seen the lost and found? All black suitcases. If you don't put a red ribbon on that thing, if you don't put your name, your seal, your mark, then it's up in the air. But when it has your mark on it, when you get to your destination, you know that one belongs to me. And when you get to your destination, not even before then, you know you belong to God. This seal of the Holy Spirit, it conveys ownership. I belong to God. You say, well, is that a good thing? Oh, being owned by God, that's a good thing. I said, that's a good thing because what you own, you protect. Come on now, what you own, you secure. What you own, you provide for. And I'm thankful that my God owns my life. He provides for me, protects me, secures me, takes care of me. When I can't make it on my own, he has made a way for me. This seal, it proves the transaction is finished. Could you take one big breath, sigh of relief right there? It's finished, brother. Sister, it's finished. I know you don't measure up, neither do I. None of us meet God's righteous standard. Thank God the transaction is finished. He sacrificed, I trusted, he sealed me. Amen to that. And this seal conveys ownership. There's another scripture I'd like to share with you in Matthew 13, and it will tell you, answer the question just how valuable you are to God. I said at the beginning, a lot of believers have anxiety about this. We always are questioning our value because of maybe the skeletons in our closet or some of the contemptible sins that we've committed in the past. And so we wonder, how could God ever love me after the divorce? How could God ever love me after I spent time in jail? How could God ever love me after being an addict for so long. How could God ever put any value on me? I've been divorced three times. How could God ever value me if he only had a record of my sin? I I don't understand how, even after you said the prayer, even after you've committed your life to Christ, I've heard Christians say this once, if once a thousand times. I know God has forgiven me. I just can't forgive myself. Anybody ever heard that? Anybody ever said that? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Always wondering, do I have value because of my past? Here's a scripture that will take all that anxiety right out of the way. Matthew 13, verse 45 and 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. Who when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and he bought it. 
And I'm here today to tell you, you are that pearl of great price. When I was younger in my theology, I thought Jesus was the pearl of great price and that I gave up everything for him, but I had it twisted. No, in this text, this merchant seeking beautiful pearls is Jesus. And when he found a pearl of great price, meaning the church and all who would believe, he sold everything and bought it. He gave everything to purchase your soul. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At Calvary, he bought your soul. God looked ahead in time to 2021. And despite your past or, or whatever else that you're holding on to or can't forgive yourself from, I want you to know that he saw so much value in you that he purchased your soul with his sacrifice on the cross. Amen to that. That's the love of God. That's the grace of Jesus. That's the mercy of Jesus. When he found a pearl of great price, the church or every believer that would ever be in his church, God sees you as a pearl of great price, so much so that he would die on an old rugged tree to purchase your soul out of the clutches of hell and the enemy, the devil. He bought you. He sought you and he bought you. If you only knew how valuable you are to God with all of our trauma, past hurts, pains, sins, failures, we can feel like damaged goods, unworthy of God's love and his grace, but he loved you so much, he gave everything to purchase your soul. Salvation is not just a narrow escape from hell. No, it means belonging to Jesus. Thank God for this seal. The seal of the Holy Spirit that he deposited in your heart, it proves the transaction is finished and it also conveys ownership. God owns your life. He will protect you. He will provide for you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. He will provide for you. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He will secure you. Jesus said, not me, not the denomination. He says, all the Father have given me are in my hand and no man will snatch you out of my hand. I'm glad God owns my life. The seal in you and the seal of the Spirit in me conveys ownership. God has taken ownership of my pathetic life that was broken and hurting, bent on sinning, lost, and now Jesus found me. I didn't find him. He found me, and he gave his life that he might purchase my soul, and now I'm glad to say I belong to the Master. Oh, I love 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Amen to that. If you do a DNA test on me and my son, my son was here. They live out towards the Hamptons in eastern Long Island. And uh, my son and his wife and the most beautiful grandchildren you have ever seen in your life was here this morning. <laughs> and I, I didn't think about it, but I told the story on him. Listen, if you do a DNA test on me and a DNA test on my son, it will prove he belongs to me and I belong to him. The test results are in. Did you never watch Maury Povich? The test results are in. I am the father. <laughs> he is my son. The test results are in. God is my father. I am his son. And then I said, do you mind if I tell a little story on you? He said, no, that's okay. I heard, he kind of shook his head, yes. I was going to tell it anyway. Not really. 
when he was just a little fella, we lived in a double wide trailer upstate New York. We lived in farm country. And one day, him and his friend, Donna, they might have been eight or nine years old, were playing in the neighboring farms, in the farmer's barn where he had just harvested a large crop of hay. Well, him and his little friend decided to play what they call Chinese fireworks. That's where you light matches and throw them in the air. Well, that didn't work out so well. Uh, because they thought they had put all the little matches out, uh, and they came home. Sean was in his bedroom in the back of the house, and, and the police came to our house. Pop, pop. Uh, there's been a fire up here, and a couple of boys, namely your son being one of them, was seen coming running out of the barn. So my wife and I went back and said, Sean, were you involved in that fire? And there he stood with his eyebrows singed, <laughs> saying, not me. <laughs> he was guilty of sin that day. Oh, boy, I was, I was madder than mad. I mean, we didn't have much money then, and, and the farmer added up the loss to come to $1,100, and I had to pay for it. Well, I was mad at him that day. I mean, we didn't have much. We were so poor back then, we couldn't pay attention. You'll get that this afternoon. <laughs> we didn't have much, and that was going to cost me $1,100. I could have whooped him from here to, to kingdom come. I didn't, but that day he disappointed me, and then he lied to me, but he's still my son. I said, he's still my son. He, there's a birth certificate with my name on it, and there's a seal on it. A raised, imprinted seal, a mark that says he belongs to me, and I'll never deny him. Your kids ever mess up? Don't leave me up here by myself. You got some kids pull some things that made you almost want to write them off? <laughs> Listen, the test results are in. God is my father. He's your father. Not because I always follow the rules. Not because I go to church twice a week, give tithes, or have reverend in front of my name. No, I'm his because he purchased me with his own blood. Not silver, not gold. With his own blood, he purchased my soul. And I belong to him. Say amen out loud. <laughs> Praise God. Let me give you one final thought on this seal. This seal. It proves the transaction is finished. Are you happy about that today, everybody? <laughs> There's no more sacrifice needed for sin. Thank God. It conveys ownership. He belongs to me. I belong to him. He bought me. And I belong to him today. And nothing on earth can change that. Finally, the seal guarantees our inheritance. Somebody say amen to that. Look, verse 14, one more time. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, and I don't want to just read it to you. I want us to read it together. Come on, here we go. One, two, three. Who is a deposit in our hearts guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory, who is a deposit in our hearts, the Holy Spirit, guaranteeing our inheritance. Praise God. You know, I've asked, uh, I like to ask people if they know they're going to heaven. And when people are asked, are you going to heaven? By the way, how many want to go to heaven? Some of you didn't raise your hand. That scares me. <laughs> how many want to go to heaven? I feel better now. Uh, how many want to go today? See, there you go. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody, ben, nobody wants to go today. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> when you <laughs> but when you ask people, are you going to heaven, what do you think? Let me ask you a question. What do you think is the most famous answer? I hope so. I hope so. Christians live with a lot of anxiety. They don't understand their value to God. They don't understand that the work is finished. And they think they never measure up. And they're always wondering, will the good outweigh the bad in the end? Will I be holy enough? Will I be righteous enough? Will I be good enough? Will I have worked hard enough? Will I have performed well enough? 
Christians live with these kind of anxieties because they never understood good theology. But here's good theology. The transaction is finished. And he loved you so much and you had so much value, he bought you. And finally, you don't have to hope so another day in your life because the seal of the Holy Spirit does something. Would you put the scripture up one more time? It guarantees our inheritance. It guarantees our inheritance. And I want everybody to say amen out loud to that. What is your inheritance? Well, your inheritance is heaven, absolutely. But your inheritance is more than heaven. It is the sum total of all that God has promised you, and it starts now. But someday, someday, when Jesus comes again, we're going to spend eternity with the Lord. Praise his mighty name. And that is not, I don't have to roll the dice. I don't have to flip coins. Heads or tails. Am I going? Am I not going? Did the good outweigh the bad? Uh, I hope so. I, I hope it all works out good in the end. And somehow he accepts me. No more of that. The Holy Spirit, the seal, the seal of God in your heart is the guarantee of your inheritance. So when I go to bed tonight... I am not going to bed wondering, well, you know that childhood prayer, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep, and if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul will take, I pray, I hope, no, I know the Lord my soul will take. No more hope so, no more rolling the dice or flipping a coin, heads or tails, the Holy Spirit guarantees our inheritance. The Holy Spirit in you is all the guarantee you need to be assured that what God started in you, he will finish. I love Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you <laughs> will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me finish it with the final illustration where bad is going to come. Has this helped you at all, anybody? This marked sermon series, I wanted to do more than encourage you. I wanted to anchor you, settle you, and build you up in your most holy faith. A lot of the anxieties we deal with as Christians can be settled with just some good theology and teaching of the word of God. This inheritance, uh, let me illustrate it with a final, a final way. Uh, any cowboys in the room? Any cowboy wannabes? Never mind. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I've always wanted to be a cowboy. Amen. Amen. I've got the outfit. I've got the hat, the chaps, the spurs, the boots. And if you get an outfit, you can be a cowboy too. Back when I was in western New York, I used to train horses to ride. I even rode in a couple of rodeos. Uh, my sons rode professional. They were professional bull riders. If I wasn't called to be a pastor, I'd be on the back of a horse somewhere in Montana. That's just the way it is. Um, but uh, let me illustrate this, this guaranteed inheritance one final way. Ranchers, cowboys, they brand their cattle. You've heard of branding, right? Maybe you don't want to be a cowboy, but have you heard of branding cattle? <laughs> I think I'm just going to sing now and quit. Uh, <laughs> it's, where, it's where a rancher will put a hot iron with his brand in a hot fire till it's red hot, and then the cow's tied up, the calf, and they actually put that hot iron right into the hide of the cow. It singes the hair, and, uh, but it leaves... It leaves a mark that says that cow belongs to that rancher. Believe it or not, when I was about 16 years old, I worked for a local horse farmer. He had some cattle. I actually helped him one day brand cows. After they brand the cows, they will put them out to pasture with other ranchers' cattle until the roundup comes. And when the roundup comes, they gather in all the cattle and the farmer can tell which one's his because of the mark. And one day, <laughs> there's going to be a great roundup. I said, one day there's going to be a great roundup in the sky. Can I get amen to that? 
and God will know who's his because you have been marked. One day, Jesus is coming back for everyone who has the seal, the mark. He determines and declares that he owns us. We belong to him. The transaction was finished, and he is going to take us to heaven, and we are going to spend eternity with our Lord. Give him a praise and stand to your feet today. King David said it in the famous psalm of all, Psalm 23, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How do you know that? Because you've been marked with a seal. The Holy Spirit guarantees our inheritance. And friends, the final word does not belong to you or to your family or to anyone else who knew you in the past. The song they're about to sing says the cross has the final word. Come on, Kurt, let's sing it together. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. The sorrow may come in the darkest night. The cross has the final We declare it the cross. And the cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Evil may put its strongest fight, but the cross has the final word. We sing the cross. The cross has the final word. The I pray the word of the living God has settled some of your questions. Not all, but some of them. And reduce your anxiety about some of our questions about value. What if I sin and am I going to heaven? I'm thankful to Jesus because he doesn't leave us wondering. He has given us great assurance. And I praise his wonderful name. When you go to bed tonight, if you have full faith in Christ, you can sleep like a baby. Sleep like a baby. Because if you die before you wake, there is no guess. I'd like you to bow your heads with me today because I have no doubt with people watching online and even maybe people here today in the house. Maybe you've never crossed that line. You've believed in your head. You know, you know that there's a God. You you just never fully trusted his sacrifice on the cross. Maybe you've just tried hard, tried to perform well, 
and work at it. Today, with one act of faith in the finished work of Jesus, with one act of faith, trusting in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, if you will put your hope and faith and trust in his sacrifice, that transaction will be completed and you will know it's finished as he deposits his Holy Spirit in you. He marks your life with his seal. I wonder how many people are kind of tired out with life. Jesus has come to me and I will give you rest. And if you're here today, I want to pray with you, watching online, sitting on your couch. I just want to pray with you and lead you in a prayer that will bring you <laughs> to this finished transaction where you can say, I am a child of God now. The Bible says whoever believes on Jesus, that he died and rose again and confesses Jesus as Lord will be saved. And if you need to be saved today, I want you to pray with me and just call on the name of the Lord and say, Jesus. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I trust you. I trust your sacrifice. I need forgiveness. I need healing. I need cleansing. I want to be a child of God. I want to be a son of God. I want to be a daughter of God. I want to give my life to you. Today, I confess you as my Savior and Lord. I've been living with way too much anxiety. Today, Lord, I want your peace about my value, peace about forgiveness, and peace about heaven. I'm giving you my heart today, Lord. Amen. And now while all our heads are bowed, I want to look out over the congregation. And everybody here, even if you're online, you can just kind of raise, put a little raised hand in the chat box. If you just prayed that prayer with me, I want you to raise your hand right now. Praise the Lord. I'm counting. I see one. I see two. I see three. I see four. I see five. I see six. I see seven. Eight. Put your hands down. Something supernatural is happening right now. Your empty life is now being filled with the Holy Spirit. God has given you a deposit of His Holy Spirit in your life. And now you're marked with His seal. You belong to Christ. You belong to Christ he will never deny his son or his daughter. You have the mark of God on you, the Holy Spirit. You've just experienced a miracle. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, the Bible says when one person comes to faith in Jesus, the angels rejoice, and I think we ought to give a big rejoice right there. Amen. 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 Wow, the Word of God is rich and real and, and does some amazing things in our heart and settles our anxieties. As we close our service today, you will not want to miss next week, Pastor Reuben, I'm passing the baton to him to bring the next message in the Marked series. I'm, I'm going to be sitting on the front row, brother. Uh, God's got some things to teach us. Amen out loud? Listen, if today you were a guest, again, we're so glad you were here. If you'd be so kind to stop at the welcome desk and just fill out a Connect card, we'd like to give you a gift. In addition, if you just raised your hand and came to faith in Jesus, stop by the same welcome desk, fill out the same card. There's a box right there that says, I just gave my life to Christ. We'd like to follow up with you and walk with you on this journey. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, I bless your people as we go from this house of worship to our house. I pray that we will leave here today anchored, settled, built up in our faith. May your people go with the joy of the Lord and with the peace of God, rejoicing that they've been marked 
as one of God's children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, everybody. God bless you. We love you here at the fountain. Love you so much, and we'll see you next Sunday. I absolutely knew. I didn't remember your name offhand.